to my family. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would lead us and guide us in all truth and understanding. I pray for discernment. And I pray that all who, li- who are led by the Holy Spirit of God to listen to this audio message are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, our risen King and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I've only had a couple of instances where I myself have either gotten a message or gotten a, uh, a download, per se. And in one of them, it's because I was worried about what was to come in the future. I saw the way the world was turning. I saw that evil was being called good and good was being called evil. I saw the persecution of Christians getting worse and worse. Those that believed upon the name of Jesus Christ. So I went to God on my knees and I cried out to him. said, I pray for my children. I come before you because I do not want to see my children have to go through these, these things to come. I do not want them have to go through digging through garbage in order to eat or whatever may come in these final days. And I turned it over to him, and he gave me his peace, because I had many restless and sleepless nights over that. He gave me a dream. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, for those who do not know. I actually live in a place called Henderson, which is a little town near Las Vegas. And... um, I saw my family on a boat. It was a motorboat, but I don't think it had a motor on it. And we were in this boat. It was a little rickety boat. And I saw masses of storm clouds gathering. It was heavy storm clouds coming in the distance. And um, a major storm was coming towards us. And we were on a boat in the middle of the lake. And as it started to rain, I was there with my children. As it started to rain, the water, or the boat, little boat that we were in, began to take on water. And we used whatever we could find, little bowls or cups, in order to bail out the boat as it was taking on water. And the storm clouds grew fierce, and we saw thunders and lightnings throughout them. And we were busy bailing out the boat. And up ahead in the distance, we saw a huge rock. So we decided to make for the rock. As we headed towards that rock, we came upon the front part of the rock. And inside of it, we saw a hole. So we tethered the boat to the rock. And we climbed from the boat and into the rock. And we fell down upon our knees and we gave thanks for the shelter in the storm, my children and I. And as we did this, the vision panned out like it was in a movie theater, watching it. And what I saw was that we were in the cupped hands of Jesus Christ, my family and I, and that he had us in his cupped hands, providing shelter for us from the storm. And upon waking, after that day, I've been very, I've been at peace with whatever may come, whatever we have to see, whatever we have to endure, whatever part of the storm we have to be here through, I shall not fear, but I'll have faith. I shall walk in faith, because I know 
then my family and I will be in the hands of Jesus Christ, our risen King and Savior. And I want you all to know that no matter what comes, be at peace and know that His arm is not too short to reach us in our time of need. Know that He is alive and well this day. He is with us and not against us. He goes before us and He makes the crooked pathway straight. He's our shield and our buckler and even our strong high tower. He's our protection from all evil. The Lord our God is a rear guard. He's a very real help in times of trouble. And he will never leave us or forsake us. If you have worries or anxieties, as I did, turn them over to Jesus Christ. Lay them at his feet and pick up his yoke for it is light. In turn for all your anxieties and worries, he will give you his perfect peace, which has no understanding. Your prayers, the prayers of the righteous, move him. They petition him. They allow him to work in our lives. They are weapons of warfare. They are our long weapons. Our short weapon is the Word of God. That is our sword, activated by the Word of God. And our long weapons are our prayers, which can reach over long distances. Never stop standing in the gap or praying for those you love and for the lost. I have a word today from our sister Deborah Walden Fry, the Lord of the Harvest, I am. Beloved, I am the Lord of the Harvest. You who sow in tears shall reap with joyful singing. You have planted the word with your tears, and you shall see the harvest. Rejoice, dear one, for my angels have been sent to touch all those that you have prayed for. Are not the angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Oh yes, my child, I am a faithful unto a thousand generations. Do not fret over the future of your children or loved ones who have wandered away. My promise is that all of your children shall be taught by me, and great shall be the peace of your children. Do not be anxious, dear one, but give them completely to your Savior. Know in whom you believe and be persuaded that I am well able to keep that which you have committed unto me until that very day. For thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken, and the prey of the tyrant be rescued. For I will contend with those who contend with you, and I will save your children. The Lord of the harvest shall send out laborers as you pray, my warriors are stationed all over the world for such a time as this. Only I know the heart of a person. I alone know how to reach them, my child. My spirit shall draw them to me. I am sending harvest angels with their sickles to bring in your children and your children's children and all those you have prayed for. Rejoice, beloved, and faint not. I am the author and the finisher of salvation. He who goes back and forth weeping carrying his bag of seed, will indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. By grace I shall bring many sons and daughters to glory. By grace they shall be saved, healed and delivered. You shall see my goodness in the land of the living, for the fields are white with harvest. But we who see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. 
bringing many sons to glory. It was fitting for God, for whom through whom all things exist, to make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering. That is written in Hebrews 2, 9 through 10. Pray you therefore, the Lord of harvest, that he will send forth laborers into this harvest. Matthew 9 and 3, 9 and 3, 8. Matthew 13, 38 and 39. The field is the world, and the good seed represents the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the son of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Hebrews 1 and 14. Are not the angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? Revelation 14, 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Okay, my family, as with every word, trust in no man, trust in no woman, but put your full faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our risen King and Savior. I pray that you would go into your prayer closets and seek confirmation from this word, as you should with all words, in Jesus Christ's most holy name. And I pray that those of you who are in need right now, those of you who are sick, those of you who are, have anxiety, those of you who have problems, that you turn them over to the Lord. I pray that He answers your prayers when you turn them over to Him and that you trust in Him. And when you turn them over and trust in Him, I pray that He shows you that His arm is not too short to reach you in your time of need. I pray, Father God in heaven, who put His holy fire hedge of protection round about us on all sides, far above us and far below us. I pray that He would cover our families, our places of work and worship, our home and our vehicles, our pets and provisions, our children, their schools and their activities with His same holy fire hedge of protection, the same that He put around Job and his family. I pray that He would hide us from our enemies and that He would cover us and keep us safe from the electronics that we use day to day in Jesus Christ's most holy name. Glory to God in the highest, for He alone is worthy of praise. And glory to our risen King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.